Good evening. Again, I'll, I'll just say very briefly, uh, we, we are enjoying being with you all this evening, and it's great to be with the Roebuck congregation again, and it's great to see that good things are happening, good changes are being made, and, and of course we'll be in prayer uh, for, the, for the congregation here, and especially for those in Belize, uh, continuing to pray for them as well during this time. If you want to turn in your Bibles to Galatians chapter 3, we're going to leave read the close of that chapter, and we'll read that together beginning in verse 26 in just a moment. As you're looking for that or as you're thinking about that passage, let me just mention a thought very quickly, thinking about what Paul wrote to the Galatians in chapter 3. Think about this for just a moment, how divisive the world is. Think about just throughout your day and, and the news that you hear or possibly what's going on in the world, what you hear from different parts of the world. Think about your life. Think about how many times that division has happened in your life, personally. Maybe you've been affected by or hurt by a divisive attitude. Maybe exclusivity is something that you're very familiar with. Maybe you're guilty of it at times. But think for just a moment how divisive the world is. How divisive the culture is that we live in. We live internationally, and I can say honestly, it's the true, it's the same, what's true is it's the same in Cusco, Peru, as it is here in the States, and I firmly believe that it's the same everywhere we go. Division is present, and it's one of the greatest tools that Satan has and works on this world to accomplish his will and his purpose. In Cusco, there is an illustration that's very visible, and it's very obvious that division took place in that area of the world. You probably already know, or, or maybe you can remember studying when you were a kid about the Incas. And you've probably heard during my time here that Cusco was once the center of the Inca Empire. Everything happened in Cusco. And several years ago, more than 500 years ago, there was a, a religion regarding the moon and the sun, and, and they built an enormous temple, the Incas did, on what is now one of the main avenues in Cusco. It was the temple to the sun god. And it's this great structure. It was supposed to have been several stories high, and you can still see the foundation of that structure. If you've ever heard about Inca architecture, the great rocks that you can't even slip a a sheet of paper between two rocks and the seam of the rocks. That's true. It's this incredible architecture that still remains. Built on top of that, when it was destroyed, is now a Spanish colonial architecture of what is now a temple. And what happened was, 500 years ago, the Spaniards came and they wiped out the Inca civilization. And then after that, they began tearing down all the Inca architecture and building Spanish colonial architecture on top of it. And so you can still see what's called the Cori Concha today. You can drive by it or you can walk through it. And you can see as you're looking at the facade of the building, you can see the Inca architecture, the great big stones, and then you can see that it was once leveled and this temple was built right on top of it, the foundation. You could see the scars left by the Spaniards that removed one false religion or a culture built on a false religion just to build another false religion on top of it. That's division. That's the effect that Satan has on this world. And so, decades or, or thousands of years before Christ, the world was living in division and, and God's people were crying out to God for rescue, for salvation. And there were several uh, prophets that were discussing and prophesying about a Messiah, one who was to come, an anointed one. And then we read in Scripture about Jesus, about His salvation. And Paul here in Galatians chapter 3 gives us a great explanation of the salvation that Jesus gave. It wasn't just spiritual salvation, but more specifically, it was a salvation that could unify all nations. He writes, For in Christ Jesus, you all are sons of God through faith. 
For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. And then he says, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is no male and female, for you all are one in Christ Jesus. Paul says, let's talk about the salvation found in Christ Jesus. The key word for Paul is one. No more division. There's no more cultures. There's no more societies. There's no more division between different groups in a society. There's no more wars. There's no more reasons for for divisiveness and for enemies. And, And we could go on and on because we live in this currently today in our time. Paul says, in Christ, in the church, in this culture, counterculture that is the church, living inside this world that's at enemy, at war with us, Paul says, we're all one. We're all the same, and it's due to the salvation that God has given us through Jesus Christ. So there's no, neither Jew nor Greek, male nor female. We could say, there's neither... American nor Peruvian. Those from Belize and those from the United States are all the same. We're all one people in Christ. And in the kingdom of God, that's how it is. And so we look forward to the kingdom of God being fully realized and to enjoy the inheritance that has been given to us. Paul says again, this belongs to those who have been baptized into Christ. It belongs to those of us who have followed the gospel, what the Bible teach, teaches us about God's will, and those of us who have been immersed in the waters of baptism. We want to help you tonight. If you have a thought about this, a doubt, if you have questions, if you'd like to study the Bible, if you have made a decision to be baptized into Christ, we want to see that too. and We want to celebrate with you. If you have any need tonight, we ask that you come forward.